Hi, everybody. A very warm welcome to everyone joining the webinar today, which is the second in a series of webinars designed to help hospitality prepare and get match fit for the biggest commercial opportunity we've seen here in the UK for the last four years. My name is David Walker. I'm the Commercial Director at Shield Safety, and I'll be your host for the next 40 minutes or so. During this webinar, we'll build on the activities we talked through the first session some four weeks ago. We've got two tremendous speakers to share their insights, thoughts, and top tips with you all. We have Hannah Solomon, Head of Membership Development at the British Institute of Inkeeping, better known as the BII, who will be giving us an overview of the services and support the BII offer to venues. Before Hannah, we have Rob Easton, Head of Environmental Health at Shield Safety, and recognised in the, in the industry as one of the leading voices in deploying practical and technical programmes to make workplaces and hospitality locations safer places for both staff and customers. Before we invite Rob to begin, I'd just like to set the scene. Our first webinar back on the 11th of October focused on helping venues get ready for the holiday season. And we launched our free guide and risk assessment tools. I'm happy to say that we've now into the hundreds of downloads so far. These are still available from the Shield Safety website, and I hope you find them a valuable and simple to use resource to ensure you are ready for the next couple of months or so. We've been developing our campaign around November and December, offering operators and venues the biggest commercial opportunity seen in recent times by talking about an extra large Christmas or an Excelmas or an Excelmas, however you want to say it. There are a number of specific areas which individually would be exciting for venues to take advantage of, but when they're combined, they provide a huge opportunity. Firstly, as we stand here today, there are no restrictions for social gatherings at all during Excelmas. Cast your minds back 12 months ago when in early November, we had pretty much the same feeling of optimism and energy, um, only for Omicron to come and wreak, wreak havoc and lead to mass cancellations of pre-arranged events. It certainly doesn't feel like that today, and let's hope it stays so. So no restrictions for the first time since 2019. And if you read the press, you'll see that there's clearly a pent-up demand for people to get back to enjoying themselves in hospitality venues. This demand, however, is coming from different people and different groups. And these often have different expectations or requirements for their big night out. There's clearly a demand for the classic office party. There's a lot on social media about how people have, are maybe ready for avoiding the small gathering within offices to go out. And they're going to want the noise, the frivolity, the party hats, the crackers. They're going to want a lot of fun. Some will want the same experience with a classic Christmas dinner, turkey and all the trimmings. Although with the sh shortage of turkeys, you're probably going to have to have an alternative as well. Some groups will be family and friends who haven't been able to meet for months or years. They may want something slightly calmer, slightly quieter, maybe something special to eat and drink. Other groups will be focused on the World Cup. Once every four years, the biggest sporting event in the world. And back in June, booking platform Design My Nights wrote that they'd already taken a record number of bookings to watch the World Cup in hospitality. And that was five months before the first ball is going to be kicked. And talking of the World Cup, there's going to be four games a day, starting from 10 a.m., finishing around about 9 p.m. for 12 consecutive days, including England playing the USA at 7 p.m. on Friday, the 25th of November, Black Friday. So the biggest opportunity in hospitality, with the biggest demand for office parties, it happens to coincide with the busiest day in retail. So these are unprecedented opportunities. And then even the people watching the World Cup are going to have different expectations. For example, the success of the Lionesses in the Euros this summer has created a new audience of younger female fans. They may well want to go and watch the World Cup in a hospitality location, but are likely, likely to have different expectations compared to the hardened and traditional football fans. And I mentioned the timings of the games earlier. This is the shortest World Cup we've seen at televised, with the World Cup final only 28 days after the opening ceremony. And this, coupled with the time zone, 
means that they're going to be long days. They're going to cover breakfast through brunch, all the way through to dinner and last orders. All of those slots potentially carrying high demand. It's worth pointing out the cost of the living crisis will clearly have an impact on this. Of course it will. People will potentially be choosing the games to watch away from home and they'll be balancing that with their work dues, their sporting team get togethers, their family and friends. So whilst the demand is high, it is maybe challenging to forecast. But regardless, there's clearly a massive opportunity. But this is set against the backdrop of what is still a pretty tough world for the venues and operators. I live 15 feet from the front door of my local, the Red Lion. So I get to hear firsthand each week the challenge that rural operators are facing. And of course, the time that myself and the Shield team spend with our clients have given us a pretty detailed view of operators across towns, city centres and more geographically diverse locations. And what's clear is everyone needs a plan to execute superbly against excellence. The challenges are long. Supply chain, staffing shortages, rising costs, energy prices, the World Cup being held in the winter for the first time, potentially increased use of outdoor space, changing layouts of moving tables and chairs, different menus, temporary and transient staff, increased awareness around allergens, menu redesigns, getting staff and customers home at the end of the night. They're all challenges that offset the opportunity. And we all want Excel must to be a huge success. And we want every operator to take advantage of this opportunity. But we need to ensure that the safety of suppliers, staff and customers is paramount. And with that, having set the scene for the opportunity, I'd like to hand over to Rob Easton, Head of Environmental Health at Shield Safety, who will take us through the practical ways you can deliver a superb, safe excellence. Over to you, Rob. Brilliant. Thank you, David. And thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, uh, you, you covered it really, really, really well there in your introduction, David. This is a, a huge opportunity, an opportunity that hospitality is crying out for, but we also recognise it. it's an incredibly challenging time. Um, you've covered some of the risks. We've talked about the crowds of people, the conflicting needs that they're going to have when they're visiting a premises. Throwing that the cold weather. We know that uh, during COVID, uh, uh, hospitality businesses diversified brilliantly, didn't they? They used outdoor spaces. Uh, they showed how resilient uh, hospitality is as an industry, the creativity. But what we've got now is those outdoor spaces that worked brilliantly in the summer, going, well, how can we repurpose them? Can we repurpose them? And we know that people are saying, we'll happily watch the match outside, we'll happily dine outside. But then there's risks to doing that. You know, a space that is, is safe during the summer months, the warm months, there's risks are introduced with the cold weather. We have to look at uh, uh, ice plans, snow clearing. We have to look at lighting more. The structures that we're using in those areas, uh, are they suitable for the cold, wet, windy uh, winter evenings? Yeah. We then bring in the footballing crowd, as you mentioned, their needs may be different to that office party, those people to, to come and celebrate. And we're really aware at, at Shield, we love hospitality. We love working with hospitality businesses. It's in our blood. It's what it's what we do. And we really, really felt that at this time, it was our, 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 our responsibility, if you like, to stand up and support, recognising there are challenges within the industry. What can we do to help? And that's why we we created the Exomus, wasn't it? The Exomus campaign, that ability to, to stand alongside um, our clients, in fact, anyone in the industry, and make sure that they make the very most out of this period. One of my worries always, and, and I go back and, and I have been an operator, I was, I was in operations for many years, running regions and pubs, is you have this short, short term uh, opportunistic. You know, we, we, we seize the moment and, and operators are brilliant at that. They see a, a, an opportunity, they take it, uh, and the entrepreneurial spirit uh, wins through. But what we say is just let's make sure that there's still, you know, for that short term opportunity that is excellent, is make sure that the business is protected in the long term, that there is a business there to come back to in January. And any action that's taken over this period, um, it's, there's still a business there to run in January, February, and on into, into next year. Now, what we've done, and you mentioned it already, thank you, David, is we've created the uh, match fit for excellent. So that's our guide. Uh, that does look at safety, absolutely, as you'd expect from Shield Safety. But we've worked with uh, with uh, our clients and people we know in the industry, indeed the BII we were working with about what are the what is a great way to run a hospitality business during this period. So yes, it focuses on safety, but it also looks at uh, marketing opportunities, business development opportunities. So I'd urge you if you haven't uh, downloaded that already, please get that get match. 
bit for Exomus uh, document. We're really proud of it. The next one we have is the risk assessment. Again, I'm the safety guy. You expect this. I'm going to talk about risk assessments. Uh, and I know people um, uh, fear them for some. Uh, and they're going, well, how do I even start? So well, what we've done is we've sat down uh, with our team of consultants, with our team of EHPs, and created this Exomus risk assessment. Please download it, use it. Uh, do, do it now with what I'll be encouraging people to do. This isn't something that you do the day before kickoff. Oh, you know, uh, we've got an office party coming in at two. Let's, uh, let's dig out the paperwork. This is written specifically about being prepared, taking action now to give you the absolute best opportunity to run both a safe, efficient, uh, yeah, and also hopefully a very profitable uh, business over that period. So if you haven't accessed those documents yet, please do. What we've done on the back of those documents is we've created some safety checklists. That's what I'm here to really launch today. We recognise that there is um, specific risks to business that this time brings. And what we've done is we've created some daily, weekly and monthly checklists for you to use to, to go into your business to make sure that you're ready for revenue, that you're set up, that you're going to do it safely. And what we've done is we've based those, uh, based those checklists on our understanding of hospitality, our understanding of the risks that are going to be present during this period, but also to back up the risk assessment and the other documentation. So they go hand in hand. We've also worked with our, our partners and friends over at Popston Allen, and they're uh, looking at the risk to um, licensing in particular. So there are those monthly licensing checks because there's, you know, there's a surefire way to stop a business in its track is to get a licensing review. So uh, we've created those monthly licensing checks as well. The way that you'll be able to access those checks is through the risk proof uh, software. Uh, the app you can see here on the phone, perfect for use on your phone, your mobile device, a tablet, uh, and you access the daily, weekly, monthly checks through there. We know this software uh, is used by thousands of businesses up and down the country. It saves time because uh, there's no routing around for paperwork when the diary is lost or has gone home with the chef. If there is instant, it's in your hand. It's smart because there's uh, the checklists are designed. They're automated. Uh, you don't have to be putting not applicables. The, the software is smart in its response. We know that it saves money because it saves time. It saves printing costs. Uh, we know that it improves accuracy because the checks are relevant to your business. It, it ensures compliance. It ensures that by uh, being able to look at checks remotely. One of the challenges we know with paper checks is that they're hidden away in a kitchen somewhere. As a manager, particularly if you're a multi-site operator, you can review the completion of those checklists wherever you may be. And that means at any point at time, wherever you are, you know the checks that are being completed in your business. One of the challenges of the paper checks, as I say, they might be reviewed monthly, three monthly, six months time, and there's been a whole time period where they haven't been completed. Remember, this software has been developed not by only by Shields developers, but our team of safety practitioners. We know what we need to do to see a compliance at the right level, continuous improvement, and importantly, what really makes a difference. This isn't just about doing records for record's sake. This is about we know the use of this software with the right checklist will bring about an improvement and efficiency to your business. Um, so we're really pleased to say as part of our safety net, but we are providing access for a period. Now, for the football fans uh, amongst you, um, I, of 1966, I'm told, David, that this is significant. I know, of course, it's a significant year. I'm only playing, uh, playing with you. Uh, so what we're offering is the 66-day uh, free trial uh, to access that software, uh, to access uh, the, the risk-proof monitoring module. And we'd really urge you to use it because we know it makes a difference. We know it makes businesses safer. It also will give you an introduction to how you can, uh, the other benefits, the, the time savings, the efficiency that it brings. Um, so I'd really encourage uh, you to, to download, to access it and use those checklists that we've completed for you. The next thing uh, I'm pleased to talk about is access to our safety advice line. Again, as part of Safety Net, we are providing again for 66 days access to our safety advice line. For those that are not familiar with it, this is our service that is provided uh, and it is teamed by an incredible, and I say truly incredible, team of uh, safety practitioners. And, and it is industry leading. Yes, there are other advice lines available, um, but what we're really proud of at Shield Safety is that this is environmental health practitioners. And these are senior environmental health practitioners, really experienced safety practitioners who, when you phone up, it's them that answers the phone. You're not triaged. You're not put through to someone with a basic qualification and say, oh, I'm afraid I'm not able to help with this. I'm going to have to escalate it or call you back. These are safety practitioners, because when you make that call, 
you need that answer there and then. You're not, you're not phoning up for a nice chat. You're not phoning up just on the possibility. You need help. You need good quality advice. And the way that we deliver that is by having the right people on the end of the phone at the time that you need them. The sort of things you may be uh, using it for is, I don't know, we're, we're, we're doing a new menu or you've heard that there's change in uh, pre-packaged for direct sale for, for allergens. We're thinking of doing a, 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 take, a sandwich to go, for example, but we're going to pack it up. What do we need to be doing differently? We've never done this before. We're making a small change to our menu or we're putting a structure in the garden. What checks should I be asking for? Is there any certification I should be asking for? What do I need to be doing for electrics? It's really an opportunity to ask that question at the time you need it and to know that you're going to get that answer from a person who really, really knows. They understand safety. They understand uh, the hospitality industry. And again, remember, these are environmental health practitioners. We're really proud at SHIELD, say we're the largest employer of EHPs in the country. You know, they're at the heart of the advice that we give. Now, on the very, very rare occasion uh, that we get a question, and I think maybe we've only had a couple uh, in the many years I've worked with the Safety Advice Line, the safety advice line are backed up by a team of consultants. Um, so if on the very odd occasion that something comes through, what we can do is we can tap into any one of our team of consultants or chartered environmental health practitioners. And again, we can, uh, we, between us, we'll hopefully know the answer. If not, we can go out and find it very quick. And if no one's given the answer before, then we'll create one and we'll agree amongst a team. So please, uh, we're really, it's available. We know that people have questions. They may feel uh, uncomfortable finding out their local authority, their local environmental health. Indeed, their local authority may not even provide that service. This is, again, remember, environmental health practitioners at the time that you need them, giving you good quality advice to support your business. And they really understand hospitality. They really understand commerciality. And there we go. So the, the call to action there, David, uh, the 66 days, it's there <laughs> for everyone to see. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Rob. So just so everyone's clear, the safety net consists of those two elements. It's access to the software and access to the safety advice line for a period of 66 days from when venues sign up. Absolutely right. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Rob. Um, may I now introduce Hannah, who's going to take us through um, a deep dive into the BII. Over to you, Hannah. Thanks very much. Um, so um, thanks for having me today. It's great to be involved. Um, I wanted to, to talk to your viewers and your operators about the support that the BII is able to offer, um, what we do and how we do it. So the BII, the British Institute of Inkeeping, um, has been around for just over 40 years um, and we have over 10,000 members um, across the UK. So that includes people running pubs uh, in all different types of um, agreements. So we have leased and tenanted, uh, we have managed, we have BDMs and we have operators um, running on different types of franchise agreement. And we're here to support them um, to run their businesses effectively, um, to connect them with each other and to give them opportunities to grow sales. So um, a big part of what we, we do as a trade body um, is work with other groups such as, as you can see, the BBPA, which is the British Beer and Pub Association, and UK Hospitality. Um, and we work, my boss Steve there, as you can see in the picture, works very closely with them and also sits on the Hospitality Strategy Council. Um, he spends a lot of time getting our members' voices and understanding what the challenges are that our members face and taking that voice and, and those messages back to government to try and get the best results for our members. That's a key part of what we do. Now, from a very practical perspective, we have also a lot of support that we offer to our members um, on a on a day to day basis. So you can see on this slide that includes things like helplines. So professional helplines uh, offering support in lots of different key areas, uh, different types of communication, because we accept that all of our members like to communicate differently. So we do social media comms, but we also have regular emails that go out to our members. Um, we send a magazine out quarterly, um, which features a lot of our members on a, on a quarterly basis, talking about best practice and sharing what they're doing and keeping people up to date with what's going on in the industry. But we also provide a lot of tools, calculators um, and, and support on the website that, that is there for a sort of practical day to day basis for our members. So the helplines is probably the key um, 
benefit that usually ranks at number one when we ask our members what's most important to them. And, and obviously, Rob's mentioned uh, that as part of the safety net package, uh, you get 66 days of access to the Shield Safety Helpline. We actually, for our members, provide access to that helpline throughout their membership. So that's all included. But we also work with other key partners um, to make sure that our members have access to professional advice in all the different areas that they might need uh, in the day to day running of their business. So while Shield Safety obviously cover the food, fire, health and safety for us, we also give advice or, or we have a partner that gives advice on business rates. Um, we work with John Gaunt and partners on legal advice and licensing advice so our members can access them at any time throughout their membership to get some advice around any queries that they might have. We also work with a partner called Bayani Law who give HR and employment law advice to our members um, and obviously we also provide tax advice through a company called RSM. In addition to that we've got our own helpline which helps our members with any general queries that they've got and a landlord and pub co helpline which helps to facilitate the relationship between the publican and the person who owns the building so their landlord whether that's in a tenanted agreement or a lease agreement um it's around those life events that that maybe come up where where an operator might need some additional support from an independent body so we've also launched this year, in 2022, our accredited advisors. And what this is, is a selection of companies that we have done a number of checks on. Uh, so the BII set up some panels. We don't actually run the panels ourselves, but we did facilitate this. And it was with the purpose of making sure that our members could access uh, professional services that met certain uh, key uh, requirements, I guess, to show that they were professional. So being part of professional bodies, trade bodies, having the relevant insurances, um, having the relevant experience to be able to support our members in the right um, area of business as well. So we cover charters today as solicitors and accountants and anybody who shows on those lists. So you can access that via the BII website if you're a member takes you to the accredited advisors page um, and it will show you a list of people who are covered and have met those requirements and that's for any specific advice that you might want around new agreements or rent reviews um, end of contracts or, or that kind of uh, issue or MRO issues back to what we provide in terms of the website and I know Rob touched on compliance from a health and safety perspective um, and David's mentioned temporary staff we also provide for all of our members access to a staff contract builder so we recognize that uh, providing um, staff when you have them with contracts is a really important part of being being an operator so we have built into our website with our partners a staff contract builder that our members can use um, as much as they need to so a new contract for every member of staff completely free throughout their membership it's a really easy process to do as well so again, when you go onto the website, um, we have a little video that you can watch so that you can see what it looks like as you as you complete that contract. But it's a very easy process to do to make sure that all of your staff contracts are up to date and fully compliant. We also work with a number of trusted partners, so Shield Safety being one of them. And these are companies that we're really proud to work with who offer products and services to our members that are um, either uh, different or exciting they might have special offers um, and now as, as you know times are very difficult for our operators they're, they're facing unprecedented challenges so now is the time to be looking at all of the different areas on the PL and see where uh, changes can be made see where business can be improved um, and so we work with a number of different businesses and partners to help facilitate that so each of them have regular updates on the offers that they they provide to our members that can be found on the trusted partner section of the BII website we also have what we call a knowledge bank so this is really the area of the website um, of the BII website where we provide uh, tools and calculators and guides to help our members in different areas. So we've split that down um, as you as you visit the website into lots of different areas. But what you'll find on there, for example, is we've just launched a new energy section. So one of the, the key problems at the moment facing the industry, as we're all aware, is, is energy um, and the government relief scheme, which is incredibly complicated to work out. So we've just launched a new section that has a guide on how to navigate that scheme um, and it simplifies it slightly for our members. Um, 
there are also loads of other sections on there so you can find things like template bar tariffs gp calculators um all of the tools effectively to be able to run your business um uh, professionally and, and productively and that's my last slide so we are running a campaign at the moment which is called not just a pub um, not just a pub is a campaign to make people aware of the reasons why you you're so important so why is the pub so important and it's because it's that place where community comes together and it's that place where you go for a warm welcome um, and behind the hashtag not just a pub sits a campaign where you can write to your MP um, with the key asks that we need to continue to make our businesses successful um, again you can access that via the BII website um, and I would urge you to have a look at what we can offer in terms of membership support um, but also as you go into the festive period and, and this period of um, challenges that we're all facing I would also encourage you to have a look at the licensed trade charity um, website which is a website that supports all people working in the licensed trade um, with emotional and financial support as well thank you very much for that Hannah um, a really comprehensive review there of the support that the BII offer to the operators and the sector in general which, which is all about the theme for this session it's all about support the safety net as a concept is to provide an environment and a set of tools supported by the BII that allow operators to deliver a fantastic excellence safely. Um, we've just got time for a couple of questions and, and, and there's one which came through and I think you covered it early on, Rob, in your presentation, which was around the weather, um, which is obviously a high, a highly uh, important element of conversation for the British ed, ed <laughs> any time but this is the first time the world cup has been held in the winter and i'm interested in again how what your take is on on what preparation venues need to consider if they're going to look at outdoor space um i'm i'm guessing with these different audiences venues may be looking to maximize the space that they have to accommodate potentially a traditional Christmas get together or office do and show football, which might mean outdoor TVs or different use of configuration of car. I, I'm sure there's a lot going on. Have you got any advice, Rob, in, in, or any, any key insights as to what venues should be considering with regards to the weather and what safety checks they would need to include? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a real concern. You're absolutely right. And Again, even during the summer months, we see some things out there and you're going, oh, that's not great, but, but they get it, you get away with it, if you like, in the summer. It's a lot more forgiving. So, so just going through some of the big risks there, fire safety is obviously a, a significant risk. We know uh, fire, it, it, we look at number of people that can be impacted and severity, and if something goes wrong with fire, we know the impact risk of life is large. Also, risk of disruption to the business. Again, if you're, you're dealing with a fire safety issue or an actual fire at premises, and that's you're going to be closed for, for days or perhaps longer. So look around things that, that could be a concern for fire. So looking at sources of ignition, looking at barbecue, catering equipment, gas safety. So how is sources of ignition outside? So look at that. Then you've got to think about how can people uh, escape the premises safely? So you're then looking at lighting. You're making sure that your fire exits are clear. So again, it's those, those great disciplines that businesses probably have inside because their, their, their building is being designed to meet those requirements is make sure that the same principles are taken outside as well. So fire safety is a big one. Then look at this, the suitability of the structure. We know that we can go to Argos and we can buy a gazebo for 15 quid. <laughs> but, but what you're getting for 15 pounds is, yeah, is it really suitable? So again, look at the structure. What is the wind rating? Uh, if you're hiring a marquee, what are the instructions from the, from the marquee company? And then having a plan. So heaven forbid over that time period, if there are high winds forecasted, at what point do you say, well, we have to we have to shut quite simply. This is a space we can no longer use. So having those built into your to your plan. So if you have to make that call, how are you going to inform the guests? Where are they going to move to? So in the entertainment industry, we call it a show stop. So what is the show stop? What is the point where you say you must simply stop what's happening here because it's now unsafe? And of course, that's a really hard call. Imagine having to make that call at eight o'clock on a Friday evening when the pub is absolutely or the hotel is absolutely jumping, but know that you've got to make that call again. It's about the long term 
reputation and safety of the business. And then the last one I'll talk about is just think about your, your team is you're going to have them working in an environment that, again, waiting tables in the summer can be really quite pleasant. But if they're expected to work outside, have they got the equipment? Have they got the right shoes? Have they got the, 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 the woolly hat, the warm clothing? Um, because, again, we know it's hard to recruit in hospitality. We're hearing record numbers leaving the industry is make sure that you're looking after the safety and the well-being of your team. So actually what is going to be a, a high pressured busy time, let, let's make it so it's that they're safe and it's enjoyable and not yeah. wet and cold. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Rob. And um, um, just for the for clarity, uh, Argos are not the only suppliers. Of, oh, yeah, they are. Uh, uh, other uh, other stores are available. Are available. <laughs> and I'm not sure they're £15 either. Yeah, I was going to say, Rob. That maybe well, maybe, maybe that's just one, the, the, the really bad ones I've bought in um, the past. <laughs> we, have, we have a question about licensing. Hannah, I think you touched on this um, in terms of maybe it was a helpline. Obviously, because of the length of days, there's going to be certain days and certain groups, I, 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 I guess, will, will create an event around a day. They may be following a certain team or workplaces may be giving their staff a little bit more flexibility during this period, which, which may mean earlier starts. And it could be that you want to watch an earlier game. I know um, at least one of the England games is starting at 1 p.m. Um, if people want to start earlier, are there any implications around licensing if they want to serve alcohol with breakfast or brunch? And if they have, if venues have any queries, where would they go to to get some advice around what licensing requirements they may need? Sure. Well, we we do offer some uh, in the knowledge bank section on the website. We do have some general uh, licensing advice: uh, how to apply for um, ten licenses and pavement licenses and things like that but we also have the helpline which is run by john gaunt and partners um so what i would recommend is that the in the first instance you have a look on the bii website if you remember uh for the general advice around your query um or ring our helpline and the girls will be more than happy to to give you some advice but if it's a specific question around your, your own situation that you can't find the answer to we do have a helpline which again is free for our members to use um, where they can get advice from from John Gaunt and partners, which and with licensing, it's so important to make sure that you get the right advice. You know, yeah. it's not something you can wing. Yeah, we thanks, Hannah. We touched on this in the first w webinar, which is that the, there's a risk if you get it wrong that your venue can be fairly swiftly um, withdrawn the alcohol license, which obviously will have quite an impact on um certain groups who are expecting that uh when they turn up um a question a very specific question uh rob maybe if i can ask you the safety net consists of these two elements um will venues who download the safety net get access to the full range of services that the software offers during the 66 day trial the, uh, thank you, David. No, the, um, the safety net offer is very specific around the monitoring, that digital monitoring solution and accessing those preloaded checklists. That's just one element, uh, indeed, of the checklist. So there's a lot more capability within the, the, the monitoring module that can be accessed on the, on the full system. Um, there's also other elements of risk proof as well. So it, it is, um, it's a one-stop shop, if you like, for all of your safety needs. It's, a, it's an online reporting platform to understand your safety performance. Like I say, the trial will give you that one small element of it. That's the bit where we want to support businesses. But uh, if you go for the full risk proof, it's the audit platform where audits are recorded, a fire risk assessments on there. There's a training module, the registry module where you can keep all your strategy documentation and your reminders. Um, so no, really what you've got there and indeed and the safety advice line, we talked about that earlier as a phone service. That's what we're offering as uh, free as part of safety net. If you have the full risk proof suite, you also have the online reporting option of that as well. So, um, you know, we're really pleased to be able to offer the, the um, this part of the monitoring. But please don't think that that is the, the total solution. There is a lot there, a lot more that can be accessed uh, for those that uh, businesses who would you know, like to engage into to perhaps take on the risk proof software so there's a, a lot more this is just a, a a small part of what it's capable of but we we wanted to make that part available to support businesses okay. Over okay, this so, thanks rob um this has come up already a couple of times around training 
there seems to be a sense that staffing could become a challenge. I'm sure all of us who spend time in, in hospitality know how difficult it has been um, in recent months being able to have the right level of uh, staffing to deliver uh, against a service. Um, I'm guessing that means there's likely to be a requirement for temporary, potentially more transient staff during this period. But I think a lot of venues are, are advertising for help and support over the, over the coming weeks and months. Um, what can venues do? This is maybe to both of you. I know Hannah, the BII offer a lot of training to the industry, but maybe from both of you. Um, what, what guidance would you give operators that maybe want to make sure that the, the staff they're bringing on are trained to the right level to allow them to, to act safely and still deliver a great service? Maybe Hannah, if, is there any view from, from the BII in terms of yeah, training that is, I mean, that is available? I think, look, I think when, when you look at training, and, it, and it's very different from one person to the next in terms of obviously how, how much training they already have when they enter your business. Um, from a very practical point of view, I guess I would say don't cut corners. Um, it is difficult. Um, we do see lots of people um, saying, I struggle to have time to train. You know, I've got these new staff coming in. We're busy. I don't have time to, to train them. But that can be false economy um, and you know making sure that your staff are able to give a great customer experience um, is really important especially when you're looking at times like Christmas and the World Cup where you're maybe going to have clients that come into your pub who haven't been to you before and are forming their first appearance their first uh, impression of you based on the service that they require um, or the service that they get I should say making sure that your staff are trained um, legally compliant, so trained in, in, in the things that they need to be trained in, but also trained in how to use the till, trained in, in basic customer service is really, really important. Um, so I guess I would say don't cut corners. There are lots of options out there. There are online training solutions um, that our partners offer. Uh, there are face-to-face -face training solutions, um, but, but just make sure that you're doing your utmost to make sure your staff are trained. Super. Rob, any, anything to add with regards to training? Yeah, I think Hannah's already mentioned e-learning. Um, that's that's a tried and tested approach now, isn't it? I, I remember there was always a suspicion, uh, suspicion around e-learning. You know it's quick. We know it will give people that basic statutory training. So, you know, at the very least, and you can access that, get ahead, make sure that you've got access to that for when you're bringing teams on, uh, team on. So, so do that now, I'd say, is make sure you've got access to those platforms. Um, uh, ready for an awful footballing pun. Um, also remember about your current team of paying out position. See, I'm trying my best on football, David. <laughs> but, but remember, you, you may be asking that, actually, this is a front of house team member that's worked with you for, for many years, but now you're suddenly putting them into the dessert section or, or indeed yeah, it's something different within the business. So it's easy to, to concentrate on your new and the transient team. But remember, there's your, your current team and what are you asking them to do differently? And then sort of expanding on that is, what are you doing differently that you've never done before? So if you are doing that outside food offer, if you are doing a pizza oven, if you are doing whatever it may be, look at your business and go, what, what's different now to when we, we started out? And again, we often see that happens as they go, oh, we trained them brilliantly uh, when they started. And then we introduced, well, when, when was that captured? So this is a good time again to, to think ahead and go, what are we doing differently? And new team and current team, do they know how to operate that? OK, so just take take that five minutes to stop and say, what are we doing differently? OK, super. Thank you. Um, we're almost out of time. I'm going to ask both of you just for the top three top tips that you can share with the audience in terms of what are the three things if if, if you could share your insights and your wishes in terms of um, a really cool excellence period. Maybe Hannah, I can ask you, what three things would you leave the audience with? Um, to be on their to-do list? I would say uh, that customer experience has got to be number one. So whatever your experience that you're trying to create for your customers, um, quality over quantity um, is where I would go. So make sure you're looking at your business and your offer as a customer um, and make sure you're aiming to, to give the very best experience for everybody that walks into the pub. And that might mean looking at your low and no offer um, and thinking about the people who maybe don't normally come into your pub. Um, it might mean looking at 
your food offer and making sure that you haven't overstretched yourself with your menu. Um, it could look at it, it, it could be any of those things or a combination of all of them, but look at customer experience um, and make sure that you're not stretching yourself. Um, make sure you've got support. So make sure that you have your BII membership. Um, and that you've got the helpline number saved in your phone so that if you find that you need support over the festive period, you have access quickly to all of the helplines. Uh, and also, my third piece of advice would be to download the Licensed Trade Charity app um, and to encourage your teams to do that as well, because whilst we're all getting busy and we're talking about the challenges that we're facing in our businesses, your staff are also facing challenges in their personal lives and your staff are, are being affected by the cost of living crisis. So um, it's also important to make sure that they are looked after and in the best place. Um, and the licensed trade charity can help with that. Super. Thank you, Hannah. Rob, over to you Thank for your, your top tips. Brilliant. Thank you, Hannah. Mine would be uh, like a good scout, be prepared. This is, this is about getting access to the information and think about it now, not on the day before. Uh, look, um, we talk often about capabilities and there may be an aspiration in the business to suddenly do 200 covers and this amazing offer. Can you, can you do that? Do you have the team? Do you have the knowledge? And, and either you've got the time now to, to skill up and prepare for that, or there's that realisation that actually what we wanted to achieve, we're not able to do it to the guest satisfaction that Hannah's talking about. We're not able to do it safely, so maybe scale it back. But now is the time to, if you haven't done so, is have those, those, those hard, hard and long thoughts. Um, Recognise the differences, I mentioned that before, is what are you doing different in your business now already that you were maybe doing two years ago or a year ago? Recognise the differences that are gonna be introduced over Christmas and to make sure that you have the controls, the training, the risk assessments in place to capture that. And finally, as you'd expect any safety practitioner to say is make sure you're recording it. That's where the checklists come in. So if you are, you've got your daily checks, you've got your weekly checks, you've got your monthly checks, make sure that you're training, you're building that record. So for heaven forbid, if anything does go wrong, you've got that record to show the, uh, the, the, the safety net that you've introduced, uh, but also to look for trends to say, well, actually, this has been a problem for the last three, four, five days. Our records are showing us that. What can we do today to address this so it doesn't happen again? So there we go. That'd be my three three top tips for you, David. Spoken like a true member of the Scout movement, Rob. I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to use that. I think be I think the theme that's come through for me over the last 45 minutes or so has been about preparation, around getting ahead, about getting those um, insights so that you're not waiting to the last minute. Um, there's 17 days left until the World Cup starts. There's Christmas decorations going up around the country now. Lights are being turned on. It started. So don't delay. Get that preparation done. Get prepared. Use the tools that are available. That seems to be the, the common theme. Um, that's it. We're out of time. If I can just start by saying thank you very much to Hannah and Rob for their brilliant presentations and insights. It's been an absolute pleasure and delight to have you on board. Um, thank you all for listening. Um, we're going to circulate this and uh, make it available so that people can watch it offline. So please feel free to please feel free to share this with any of your uh, colleagues or network. Um, and then finally, take that action. Get prepared. Download the tools that are available to you. There's a lot there. We want Excelness to be the best possible experience for suppliers, for staff, for customers. It's going to be an amazing period of time between now and the end of the year. We're all looking forward to enjoying it immensely. But let's just make sure that we all do it safely. Thank you very much, all. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you all.